So uh, we're doing a real quick one here down at Latour's Auto. I have uh, Tim Weiss. Can I say your name? Is yeah. that cool? Tim Weiss, who helps Pete all the time down here. He's a great mechanic, does all of these big engine jobs, cylinder heads, all kind of cool stuff. And he's, he's wanting to learn more of this electrical stuff. So I'm gonna try to walk Tim through a quick test on a starting system with a test light. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so everyone else knows what's up. There was a new battery and starter installed in this and it just clicks, right? It yes, does sir. not crank. And our first check we're going to do is on the main cable. And so what we need to know, Tim, is which one of these two, because this is a split cable, which one goes down to the starter? The other one probably goes to the alternator or a power distribution box. So I need to know that. The outside, well, look how loose it is. Oh yeah, that's your issue right there. Wow. Well, Who did that? Well, let's let's do this. Let's yeah. do, let's let's do the test light test anyway. And and uh, look here. Look at all this. Stuff what are you here. seeing over there, Pete? Pete, you want to be on film too? No. Oh, the computer's pop? all corroded. Look at all that oh, I know. Well, that's typical on these, man. Okay. Hold on. Let me show that real quick. Pete, I need an eight millimeter. Here, don't do that yet. Okay. We'll ruin our video. Okay. Put that test light. Where, which one's the starter? The big one outside. Can you get to it? Can you, uh, yeah, we want to, actually, what, oh, that's on the stud. We don't want to go there. I wanted to go down on the, on, on the, the wire, wire itself. itself. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can, if you can do that. We're putting a hole. That's right. We're poking a hole. Some people hate when we poke holes, Tim, but that's well, too bad. You know what? That's, we're proving a point here. Look at this truck. <laughs> yeah, this thing's beat. Okay. What do people call it? Like cannibalism. Oh, come on. I'm gonna stab it. We're stabbing it. Just don't stab your finger. All right, good. That's good. Is it lit oh, up? Push it. There oh. it is. Okay, good. All right, so um, that's not a good test. What we want to do is crank it while he's holding that there. Go ahead, crank it. All right, see how that light goes out? Yeah. So your problem then is, is up here. Yeah, make sure you're in that all the way. All right, crank it again. Uh, push it in just a little bit harder. Yep. All right, so you see how that's going out when he's cranking it? That means our problem is right here. No yeah. question about it. I mean, obviously we saw it because yeah. the, bolt, the bolt was loose, so not, and maybe, maybe not a really great uh, video there from a standpoint of troubleshooting, but that's really, it's that simple. It's, it's loaded circuit, so for you guys, that want more information on loaded circuit testing, I'll put some links in the description of this video for other ones I've did where you're doing voltage drop tests and loaded circuit stuff on starting systems. That's how it's done, man. Bad cable, loose cable. Let's tighten it up and see if we can hear this thing crank. All right. Pete, you're on film. Latour's Auto in South Park. That's where I am. It's a good place to be. I do a lot of Pete's uh, electrical and electronic troubleshooting here so all right so um, even though that cable was loose guys what happens with these is that corrosion that gets in between that'll be your voltage drop and again you won't see it until you hit the key and load the circuit so uh, what we want to do is let's get a uh, you know Rush something that, yeah we need to clean the in between and then tighten this back up hey hey you think that wire brush is big enough for what we're doing Tim <laughs> yeah a little bit Maybe maybe we should probably got a bigger one. It's all good. Okay. Here, Paul, you try it on your. All right. So I want to be clear for those of you that were watching this procedure that when we poke that small hole in the positive cable, we use liquid electrical tape. It's actually made by Permatex. You can get it at like I don't know Walmart for like five bucks. So we'll put I've a heard of it. Yeah, we'll put a little bit of that on the hole that we poked and you know, all is well. So it's, it's just a lesson on, on doing voltage drop testing. All right, we're gonna put this back Why together and so do the same thing funky. again. All right, so we're cranking it over. We have this tightened up. And by the way, uh, <laughs> we'll go ahead. I'll talk in a second. Yeah. Voltage drop testing, Tim. Nice. All right. Shut that off, Pete. Shut off. All right, so uh, for the rest of you guys, uh, when you're doing a, uh, a battery like this, make sure that you take the negative terminal off first 
uh, and then take t the positive off and it's reverse order going back together, which is what we did, right Tim? Yes sir. <laughs> and uh, so we just cleaned it up. That's a simple voltage drop test. Again, check out the description in the, uh, uh, on this video, look at the description for some other links that I've done. And if you want more information, you can go to my website, scannerdanner.com. Uh, I have a forum there. You guys can ask me questions. And uh, you can look me up on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, all that other social crap. Uh, you'll find him there too, Tim Weiss. Thanks, Tim. Peace. Catch you later. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're, no, we're not done. I told Pete to get out of my video. <laughs> I'll leave you guys alone. So, now that we got this thing running, now we want to know, why is it misfiring? And I don't feel like grabbing all my high-tech equipment. Let's just stay with a test light here. We're going to do a basic uh, RPM drop test with the test light. Wrap that up once so everybody can hear the way this engine's running. Right. Okay. Running horribly, as you can hear. So who put the distributor in? I have no idea. Alright, well someone someone just did some work to this before it came to uh, Latours. Sorry about all the noise. Um, what I'm going to do here guys, I'm just taking my test light and I'm going to something metal on the block. It really doesn't matter. I can go right to this ground stud. That's, you know, computer grounds. Some people would be scared about that. So I'll just go to this distributor bolt. Anything metal on the car, we're just going to do a basic cylinder drop test. I'm using an incandescent test light um, that uh, you don't want to use an LED test light for this because you'll burn out the bulb. And all I'm going to do, this is my coil wire, one at a time I'm going to short out these cylinders, keeping my test light closer than my hand at all times. Hear the RPM change. Yes, and then we're looking at the distance that spark should jump out of the cap a little bit. That's good. The electrode on this design is way inside of here. You know what? Close your door to make that buzzer stop. Yeah. All right. So that electrode, you know, that spark's jumping about that far. That electrode is way inside. And the fact that it jumped outside of that cap shows you that's about at least a half an inch jump on that spark. That's what you want to see. These caps are known for cross firing. So we we're going to do two things. We're going to listen to the RPM drops and then we're going to see how far the spark jumps out on each of these. Again, keeping the test light closer than my hand. RPM change. Nice, nice yeah. jump there too. That's two that I would say are good. No RPM change. Good spark. Could be a bad wire, could be bad compression, could be an injector in that cylinder, could be a spark plug. But we at least know, remember that one. I'm gonna leave that off a little bit. Okay. A little bit of, oh yeah, drop there. Ah! I'm gonna... <laughs> Pete just went behind me and grabbed me, you bastard. Goose <laughs> All right, so Tim, you're on that side. You wanna do that side? Or do oh. you... This or, is or, you, or do you want me to come over and no, I'm gonna try it. The key is making sure that your hand, that the test light is always closer. Here, wait, let me demo one more time. The, the wrong thing to do would be if I, I don't want to take you the You don't coil. want to hold it up here. Well, it doesn't matter. So I can hold it. Are gonna get shocked? I won't get shocked. Here, I'll show you on this one. The reason I wouldn't get shocked holding it here Cause is because it's grounded and that's an easier path than I am. Okay. The key when, when doing this is to make sure when I pull this wire off, that's what's going to take right. But then here's what here's the mistake people make when they're putting the wire back on. They move the test light out of the way, uh, okay. and that's when you get shocked. So you keep the test light there the whole time. Okay, let me try. So I'm gonna keep it right here. Yep. Keep that closer, like line it up, because that spark's gonna jump out. And you don't. Have, I wouldn't hold it there. You can. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Okay. I'm gonna prove something here. Now uh -huh. leave it. Leave it go there. Watch. I am not getting shocked. Wow. Right. Okay. I could even go closer. Why am I not getting shocked? Because that test light's grounded. 
an easier pass. Okay. Good. So did you hear the RPM yep. change? That's a good one too. Go, we'll, we'll go to the next one. This one's dead for sure. Keep that test light there. Um, shut it off real quick, Tim. Let's take these three and, 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 and loosen them yep, up. Exactly. That makes this test a lot easier to do so you don't accidentally shock yourself. That's good. Wow. The way this is running, I'll be surprised if it's only one cylinder. It feels is like it's misfiring. Is it a... um, no, the cap's fine, Pete. He changed the cap. It looked like one. Yeah, it does look like it. That's good. That makes the test a lot easier. back and forth with the plug wire so you can listen to it yeah yeah that's a good one make sense yep Pete's gonna have me doing this shit all the time yeah Pete's got a pacemaker so we don't want we don't want Pete doing that that's a good one that's too good one. yeah I knew, there was, there. I knew there was going to be two, just based on how it was running. Yep, nothing there. A couple times so they can hear it. Back and forth. Yep. No change in RPM. So we have, we have two cylinders. Leave that one off like that. Yeah, shut this off. Okay, so guys. Be, so uh, we have two cylinders. Yeah, these are marked, aren't they? Somebody marked no, them. No, marked. This one here is dead, and so is this one. Uh, we were just discussing off camera about this cap, and these are known for cross-firing. And I had mentioned uh, uh, a few things, the plugs, the, the wires, you know, compression we checked, injectors. But um, what I wanted to mention is um, what I just told Tim off camera, that these caps will cross-fire inside of here um, because of the way they're designed. So when that happens, let's say that, um, that there was a path between these two uh, ports on the cap. So when, it, when the uh, rotor comes over and fires this one, it'll go this way, but instead of coming out to the plug, it will jump the gap and go to a different plug. And the result of that on this cap, you'll catch it with the test we did. If you take this off and the test light here, I'll show it to you on this side so it's more evident. If you take your plug wire off, you put your test light there, it should jump out to your test light. It won't jump out far. And the reason it won't jump out far is that electrode is way inside of there. Center electrode is there. All right, it's not as far in as I thought, but that electrode comes out to about here on the distributor. So as we're looking at the spark, the spark has to jump across this gap and then all the way out to here. So that's it's at least that's, a half inch gap. It's a good right? half inch, three quarter inch. Okay. So that's what you want to see and what you'll find on these systems is when the spark doesn't jump out here if you start to take your test light and go inside and then get right next to that electrode then you start seeing the spark and what that tells you is you have cross firing that is taking place inside of this cap okay and we did not have that so we were talking about that off camera you know because it's this cylinder and it's this cylinder and those two guys are next to each other here, when we were just talking about that, I'm saying it's not that because both of them are providing a very good spark out of the cap. And that's been a foolproof test for me. So a variable that I don't believe we need to talk about. So what I wanna do now without getting crazy involved with this vehicle is we'll do a cranking compression test. And um, we're just gonna hold the pedal to the floor, a gas pedal to the floor. And on this truck, what that does is that keeps the injectors from firing. And then we're gonna crank it over and listen to it. It's okay, you don't have to hide the beer. He's drinking beer, but it's a lot. I would bit. drink a beer right now too, but I have a hockey game tonight, so I'm forgoing the beer right now. We'll um, burn one. <laughs> no. Edit that. Edit that. <laughs> no way, that might stay there. <laughs> um, to each his own. Uh, pedal to the floor and uh, crank that thing over. We wanna to listen, to, listen to the engine the way it cranks. If it starts, obviously don't over rev it. All right, good. Okay, hold on. We're gonna do something different. Because we're here, the coil's here, 
we're gonna disconnect it. And a common thing that people would like to do is just disconnect the coil wire. The problem with that is this energy, it needs somewhere to go. As long as you would ground that coil wire to something, you'd be fine doing it that way. The preference to doing this test, unplug, unplug the primary, uh -huh. which keeps the coil from firing at all. And that's the preferred method. No spark at all, no energy at all. All right, go ahead and crank this over. Let's listen to this motor. Pedal to the floor. Again. Don't have to do pedal to the floor anymore. Okay. Just crank it. Okay. Sounds Compression good. sounds good, right? And for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll post a couple videos again in the description of this one on doing relative compression testing where I cover this procedure. The sound tells us a lot. So uh, the next step really on this is to look at the plugs and then uh, look at the fuel injectors, uh, Pete. But I gotta tell you, I'm done for today. Wrap it up. So we're gonna save this probably for another day or another video, uh, unless you guys wanna pull pull the plugs. Now what you can do is um, to keep it low tech, you can take the plug wires, you can switch the plug wires around and see if it moves and redo the cylinder drop test. So we could take a, let's say you have a bad wire on this side, uh, you can take that wire to the cylinder next to it, move those wires, redo your cylinder drop test. It's a method that can be done. Uh, we can move the plugs around too, redo the cylinder drop test. Um, that's about as low tech as it gets. From there, I need to hook up my scope, look at patterns, look at injectors and things like that. Um, I'm not doing that right now. So that's enough for you guys for this video. Uh, look for this van, probably Probably look for this van. I'll do a video on this misfire later, um, unless these guys end up doing a visual and finding it with a couple of plugs. I don't know when I'll be back, but look for it. It should be here. He'll be back and I'll be here. I'll be back, Tim will be here. Pete will be here. Thanks guys. Thank um, you. Yep, uh, voltage drop test on a starter with a test light and we use the same test light to do a RPM drop test. So hope you like that. Catch you next time. So yeah, we're not done. Um, I let you guys see the misfire and all that stuff and I don't know where how I'm gonna coordinate all this because I did it in segments, but uh, we have a two cylinder misfire that we identified and I want you guys to see this computer. Pete mentioned it to me while we were doing the voltage drop test. Look at all the corrosion that's all over this computer. These are known for water intrusion so water gets into the board and it causes all kinds of crap and things to not work my money pete after seeing this computer and we'll verify it whenever i come back if you want me to my money's on this needing a computer and it won't it's not just going to be the computer it'll be the harness too Ooh. because it gets into the connectors and destroys it. Um, I have another video that I shot showing this. Again, you guys that are following this, look at the description. I'll post that video in here too on what happens to these computer systems. So that that's where my money's at, Pete. Not on a plug, not on anything else. It's gonna be on a control issue for these fuel injectors for those two cylinders. And I'm sure, you know, we never put a scan to on it or anything, so there's probably multiple codes in this thing. Um, but I just want you guys to see that before we go any further with it. Uh, I'm gonna have to definitely come back to confirm, Pete, okay? Uh, but it'll be a different video, different uh, different time. All right, so um, this, this for real this time we're done. Um, there's my buddy Pete. You guys have seen Pete before. Uh, that's Pete Latour. Latour's Auto in South Park. Tim Weiss, thank you very much. We'll see this van again. Catch you next time.